You know, I'm kind of living in denial right now because the closest thing I've had to 2016 Overwatch as a feeling just ended. If you guys don't know, there's this game called Marvel Rivals, which is basically just Overwatch if it was from third person and it was all Marvel characters. And almost everything about this game has clicked with me immediately. The character designs in it are really cool. Groot looks the coolest I think he ever has right now. I experimented with different characters on this game more than I ever have on Overwatch. I have like 100 hours on Genji in that. And then the next most played is Zenyatta with 10. I was just never really encouraged to get out of my comfort zone, but this game has just done a lot more of that and kind of re-sparked that feeling of why I really liked Overwatch at all to be disappointed by the state of the game currently. Hi again, guys, and welcome back to Quite With A Y. Uh, this is a really impromptu upload. That's probably how these are going to happen for the rest of time. There is a very primal part of me that wants to be a sludge channel that uploads every single day, just talking into microphone about whatever the hell I want, and then I put game I think is cool and that I'm playing right now as background footage, but since the last time I uploaded here, I have gone back to full-time uploading on the main and second channel streaming, and I'm doing, like, bigger videos in the background. Somehow I'm busier than ever, even before my hiatus, so I'll just get them in where I can. Anyways, Marvel Rivals had its second beta test, I believe it was, for the last two weeks that ended on August 5th, like, literally right now, and it was the first multiplayer game in a while I have revisited day after day and played with a consistent group of friends. Like, I'd see them online, they were playing Marvel Rivals, and I'm like, ooh, I gotta check if there's an open spot and it was really fun. Playing Spider-Man was a little annoying because the U arc on the swing is just very, very specific and I felt myself face planted into walls like Tobey Maguire did in that first Spider-Man movie all them years ago. It was an authentic Spider-Man experience in that way, but I'm coming off Spider-Man PS5 where everything's mad polished. But hey, all the animations look great. They have a perfect Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Blue Venom skin, which was the only one from this beta that you would actually keep if you unlocked it during the beta time. But I got it, so I achieved my goal for this beta, and now I greedily await the official release date. Part of the charm of Overwatch was getting involved with the characters. Like, you got good at playing them, but you also got really invested into them as an aesthetic, as a design. Their interactions with other characters who were related to them in their backstory, or even the characters they weren't so closely connected to, and the little banters they'd have. That's like the fun of any hero shooter, like this, Overwatch Team Fortress 2, and it was almost a surprise to me that there hadn't been, like, an established comic book franchise that had made a game like this yet. Marvel Marvel, being my preferred comic book publisher of choice, not by a wide margin, but just as it stands today, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see. Also, the weirdo picks they have for characters in this, like, they added Jeff the Land Shark, which is from Deadpool comics before they added Deadpool. It's like a more cutesy echo of how Overwatch came out in 2016, and you could interchange Winston's name with Harambe and immediately knew who you were talking about. Like, people will call the shark Jeff, they will also call him Gay Little Shark, and as I've taken to, I call him Blahaj. It just feels feels right, because in the context of this game, people know exactly what it is you're talking about. Another thing that I like is the kind of encouraged and very intentional team synergy in this. The unique gimmick about Marvel Rivals is that there is a mechanic called team-ups, where basically if your team composition has, has particular characters paired together, those characters will get an extra buff because you are playing them at the same time. It's like how Reinhardt and Ana emerged as a really necessary team combo in Overwatch, but that was more because of how their abilities meshed organically which you could make an argument for being better, whereas these ones are explicitly told to you, hey, if you play this character and someone else on your team plays this character, you'll get this extra ability. Like, if Venom is playing, well, either Spider-Man or Penny Parker, which, if you didn't know, is created by Brendan Yuri, lead singer of My Chemical Romance. I love reminding people about that fact whenever I can. Venom will get a health buff, I believe, and Spider-Man and Penny Parker will get an extra move where they can press C, and they just have, like, symbiotes start spiking out of them, and it's a great, like, area of a effect crowd control attack. There's a lot of combos like that, and they tie into the shared lore of a bunch of characters, like Guardians characters will be able to pair up together. But also there is ones that are, I believe, made for the practicality of these characters partnering together. Like, Groot is a tank in this game, and he can have Rocket Raccoon, who is a healer, just perch on his shoulder and start shooting from there. But also, Blahaj, Jeff the Land Shark, who is also a healer, because it's like the same size as Rocket, they can also perch on Groot's shoulder, and it's really cute. Bro, I'm not immune to propaganda. I don't think I've ever claimed or ever could claim to be. No one is. As I said, coming into this, it was basically just like reliving those early Overwatch days, except I actually know stuff now, so it's immediately less enjoyable. That's not a mark on the game, that's just a matter of being less ignorant, and everybody knows ignorance is bliss. But I was immediately looking for the closest analogy to Genji, and right now that is 
Spider-Man, who is my favorite superhero, so easy sell on me. And Spider-Man has a lot of the same applicability as Genji, where he's a flanker, you can get in, get out really quick. He just doesn't have as strong of DPS output, so like, in most games where I was playing him, I probably wasn't gonna die all the time, because I could get the hell out of Dodge after harassing the enemy team for a bit, but I wasn't able to, like, do as much damage as I was with Genji's, like, wave dash. And these hero shooter types, one thing you'll have, especially when working with randoms, is you will be referred to as the character that you were playing in a given match. When I was getting called, like, hey, Genji, fucking do this, or you're doing this like shit, or good work, Genji, it was neat. It was like, I identify this character on some level. Asian, fat ass, probably short, likes men, you know. There is, like, a level of euphoria that comes with being referred to as, good work, Spidey. It's like, yeah, I am Spider-Man. I did do a good job. Thanks, I did swing around the map. But there is also an other side to this dichotomy, where if an enemy team has a Spider-Man who is just kicking the shit out of you, you will feel a vitriol to this fictional character who you have adored for pretty much your entire life in a way that you didn't think you'd be able to because you associate the things happening to you directly with the character in the game. Like, how much I like the renditions of the Hulk and Thor and Black Panther suit looking cool. Like, these are versions of these characters I really like how they have been designed. Goes the other way when it's somebody on the enemy team playing them better than I do and just kicking the shit out of me. There's only so much you can do. It comes as a trapping of the genre, but it is very fun to contextualize it like that. One character I didn't expect to A, try and B, enjoy as much is this character Magic. I believe she is the little sister of Colossus the X-Man in the comics, but she gets sent to one of several hells in Marvel continuity. There's like hell, the Asgard related one, and then there's like literal physical Christian hell. I didn't really check which it was, but I really like her move kit because you can just like teleport in and out and then slash at people. One thing I think is very interesting about this game is that combat is much less projectile focused. Well, not exactly. There's plenty of projectiles and gunshots to go around, plenty of characters that are explicitly shooters, but there are way more characters who are melee only or melee primary as their attack. Like Spider-Man makes sense. His little web shooters do base damage. And then like, if you manage to stick a shot on somebody, you can like get in close with them and start punching them up. But Black Panther is melee based. Magic is melee based. Venom is melee based. Most of the characters like use melee attacks as their major defense. DPS output, which is very interesting to me because every other hero shooter I've played has always had shooting in a different form as the main thing. And I think that kind of brings me to the next point of how interestingly the power sets have been adapted. Like the toolkits that each character has draw deeply on their actual power sets from the comics. And to be fair, an outsized amount of superheroes are straight up known for being punch em up guys instead of like shoot em up guys. Punisher makes sense as the Soldier 76 Philip. I hate him and I hate you if you play him, but it makes sense if that's the role he's been deemed to play. Whereas most people's superpowers are not some shit that like lets them shoot stuff at people. It's things that come out of their body or being really strong. Like Black Panther, he claws people up and he has to get like this ethereal energy when he has to use the one wind up projectile that he has. Spider-Man has web shooters on cooldown, but you're mostly supposed to use those to get in close so you can start punching people up, give them the uppercuts. It unironically pays to play Spider-Man like it's the PS5 game. Like this game was made by NetEase, which I believe the studio who did this one was actually mostly a mobile studio, and it is very impressive the amount of polish that has been put into the animations and the thought that has gone into the lore and how that affects the individual character's moveset to make it feel like, yeah, you know, within the limitations of making things balanced, this is how their tool set as a superhero and pretty much every other medium could work within the context of a hero shooter. A lot of characters that will be added in the future have been leaked, and this is a weird experience I haven't had with a hero shooter where new characters getting added are characters I already have a predetermined bias towards. And one of the people getting at it is Captain America. I'm really excited to see how the shield stuff works because that's probably going to be his main attack in like all ways. You know, he'll probably hit people with it. He'll probably be able to throw it at folk and it'll have like a boomerang effect on it. But also Ultron's getting added. And I just haven't seen Ultron done justice in a lot of media, but he is like one of my favorite, if not my favorite Avengers villain. I just need him to be sick as fuck, man. We have not been eating good out here in a long time. James Spader was a great ass voice for him in 2015, but he has not been given a lot to work with since. Beyond that, I like the way that the battle pass is set up. Opinions on battle passes as a concept aside, I do like that it's the only way to get points for the battle pass or by doing your dailies, which is like win a match, do this amount of healing, etc, etc. But also it has like these missions that will update every day or two, which are more specific things. And you can't just play matches to get XP that will up your season pass progress. You actually have to do these things that are more specific 
specific quests that encourage you to try other characters. Like, if you were a DPS freak, one of the ways you can get XP in your season pass more easily is by doing a predetermined tank challenge that it encourages you to try other characters. Overwatch had this problem where people would always want to go DPS because they were the most fun to play, and there would be a shortage of healers and tanks. So to fix this, they made it so that there was a roll lock before we were even allowed to look for a match. You had to commit to playing this type of character, or you had to be okay with being locked into one class of character for any match you were in. This game definitely has that issue, but it encourages you to do better team comp a little more softly via that team up mechanic. Like where a specific healer, DPS, and a tank playing all together will all get an added benefit if they choose to compose the team like this. So it'll be a more even spread of two tank, two healer, two DPS, but it's without having to harangue and chat about two, 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 please, please, we're gonna fucking close. That type of shit. It made pubs a little more enjoyable, but uh, I was the one who ended up having to switch to healer off of DPS a bunch. The most ideal way to play these games is still with a full party of six, but I'm hoping that when this game fully launches, people will uh, see the potential in it and give it a shot. I really like it. I'll definitely be revisiting it whenever it comes out, which might not be till early 2025, man. So I gotta get my thoughts out now while I still can. Anyways, thank you for watching this video on Quite With A Y. If you ever want to send me a topic, hit that quite box at gmail.com. I look at it sometimes. Yeah, that's basically all I got. Piss off.